Hello, Happy New Year and welcome to another Silverbird Selection Game Review. I hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year and let's hope that 2021 is not quite as terrible as 2020, although I think we've still got some months of uncertainty for the next few months at least. So today I'm looking at a game called American Road Race. Now this is a re-release of an Activision game from 1985 originally called the Great American Cross Country Road Race. Uh, this was re-released by Silverbird in 1988. Pretty rare game to find out there. My copy cost me £3.30. So let's check out the American Road Race. Let's take a look at the packaging as always then. As you can see, it's Silverbird packaging with the black and pink stripes and a pretty poor image on the front cover of two cars that aren't very well drawn or representative of any cars that really exist. Um, and the logo there, American Road Race, is pretty lacklustre as well. Obviously shortened from the original title. And on the spine you've got that logo as well. And on the back cover we've got the usual four screenshots. We've got a map of America. We've got a few driving shots there so it looks like there's different environments. You've got the desert there, top right, green landscape, bottom right, and also night time by the looks of it there. And the blurb about the game on the back cover says the ace race to test your driving skills to the limit as you dodge the law crossing America. So taking a look inside and we can see a list of games that are forthcoming which include American Road Race, also Future Ball which was never released in the end for the Commodore 64. I've mentioned that on a previous video and then a bunch of other games that were released as you can see there. Uh, you can get a catalogue, it says there. There's five free games if you write in and say what you think about the Silverbird packaging, uh, which is pretty poor, generally speaking. There's some mail order information as well, but there's actually no instructions here. Um, and the reason for that is because actually this one came with a booklet like a few of the other games have done. There's a little booklet with the instructions in. Unfortunately, my copy that I bought doesn't have that. So uh, instructions-wise, I've had to check out on the internet what the instructions are so that I can actually play the game with some degree of competency. So there you go, that's the packaging. Pretty unremarkable, it has to be said. So let's take a look at the game. So the game is loaded. As you can see, it starts with an animation of a car driving past with some smoke, and you can see the full name of the game there, the Great American Cross Country Road Race, and the copyright information. And you get the designer names there, Kevin Calcutt and Alex DeMio. And then it goes into a demo, rolling demo of the game. And once you start playing the game, you can never see that title screen again. So you only see it when it loads. I don't know if it goes back to that when it's played this demo for a little bit or not, because I've never really waited that long. So let's move on and start the game, which you do by pressing F1. And as you can see, you're presented with a map of the US with various points across it. And you actually get the opportunity to choose three different routes across America. So the default one when you load up is Los Angeles to Albuquerque. But if you press F3, first up you get this list of people that you can race against and the times that they've got for the journey across America. And you can also load a high score table effectively in opposing field from tape if you wish to. Uh, which means at the end of the game you can actually save your high scores to tape as well. I'm obviously not going to do that. And then it gives you the options of whether you want to race this route and you can do yes or no. So if I press no, it'll bring up the second one, which is Seattle to Miami. Again, give you the question, do you want to race it or not? And finally, there's San Francisco to Washington with the times for another set of races and all that kind of stuff. You never see any of these races within the game, by the way. These are just high scores that are put on the screen. You don't actually race against anyone within the game. It's just a time trial to get across America. Uh, and then there's also the US tour. Now, to do that, you have to drive through every city on the map. Uh, and as you can see, the times there are quite high. The number of miles is 11,000 to complete the route. Uh, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually going to stick. I'm going to go for the San Francisco to Washington route. So let's get started with that. So you get the map back up there on the screen. It gives you details of the road conditions at the top there, scrolling across the top. And you can use the joystick to choose one of three routes. So it's defaulting to go to Salt Lake, but I could also go via Los Angeles by pushing down. You can see the arrow on the map goes down to the bottom 
or I can also go up and go via Seattle. Um, so I think at the bottom of the screen there, it gives you how much time you get to make that journey and also how many miles it is. So uh, San Francisco to Salt Lake is 732 miles. San Francisco to Los Angeles is 374 and San Francisco to Seattle is 834. Now the most direct one to me looks like being to Salt Lake, which is quite a long route for the start of the game, but let's get on with it. So once you've decided which city you're going to travel to, then you start the race by pressing fire. And driving is done as you'd expect, steering is your left and right on the joystick. And acceleration is done by pressing the fire button, uh, which I'm a fan of, I've mentioned before in previous reviews. Oh, I'm, I'm reaching a police radar, oh dear, what's going on here? Oh, okay. So I was expecting to wait a little bit more time to have to explain that, but basically I just got caught for speeding by the cops and uh, stopped to be given a ticket. There is a way to get around that, which I'll cover a bit later in the race. I wasn't expecting that to happen quite so soon. So as I was saying, acceleration is done by holding the fire button down. And once you get to a speed you like, you can take your, your uh, finger off or your thumb off the fire button and just basically use cruise control, I guess you could say. Um, so changing gear, uh, which is something you have to do, is done by pushing up on the joystick or down if you need to. Um, and down also slows you down, so that's an interesting combination of controls. So yeah, when the RPM on the left hand side gets up to sort of 9000 then you need to go up a gear. Uh, and you've also got, to, as you've probably seen, you've got to stop for gas, which I've got a gas station coming up. So you've got a fuel level you've got to keep an eye on as well. Oh, I've missed it. That could bode badly for further in the race. Hopefully I'll get it next time. So yeah, gas station appears roughly every 100 miles you can see the miles are going down quite quickly at the bottom of the screen in the middle there so hopefully when we get to the next gas station i'll be able to stop right okay so we've got gas on the left so you've got to slow down and it'll continue to flash saying gas is on whichever side until you reach the gas station hopefully that's coming up in a second i've probably gone a little bit too slow here but you don't want to miss it there we go so i've Pulled over at the gas station, filling up the fuel tank. That should give me enough now to get through the rest of the race. And I've still got four minutes left. If they are minutes, they seem to be ticking down a little bit faster than seconds. So hopefully the rest of the route here will be fairly uneventful. Uh, now, there are no uh, people to race against, as I mentioned. So all you've really got to do is avoid the traffic. And that's fairly easy to do. If you, I find a speed of around about 170 miles an hour is the right sort of speed. To allow you to dodge the traffic although you can go over 200 miles an hour so now we're on a straight bit i'll just speed up a little bit but over sort of 180 makes it rather difficult to dodge the traffic if it, if a couple of cars come up to you quite quickly like that there you go that at least showed an example of that so I'll get up through the gears again. So the engine noise is quite sort of authentic sounding, I guess you could say. As it as the revs get a bit high, it starts to sound a little bit like you're going too high revs. Uh, so I'm reaching the city limits now. So that means I'm within 100 miles of the first stop. Uh, I haven't really talked about the graphics yet, so I'll do that in the next during the next leg. I'm assuming I'm going to make it. Yeah, I've got two minutes left. So all you've really got to do is dodge all the traffic and get to the destination without running out of time or fuel. I'm nearly there now, just 30 miles to go. There we go. So little tunes played when you reach your destination. You can see the city on the horizon as well and that does vary from one stage to the next. So now it's saying there's a snow warning, icy roads ahead. I'm currently in fourth place. So I've done pretty well on that even though I got pulled over by the cops quite early on. So the next leg is a bit strange. I could go back to Seattle, which would be crazy. I can go to Denver, which is the route I'm going to take, or I could go down to Las Vegas, which again would be a bit dumb because it's going back east, sorry, back west when I should be going east. So yeah, I'm going to head from Salt Lake to Denver. And about half fuel gone or half fuel left. 
So I'm going to need to fill up on fuel here. There's gas right at the beginning here. You can see we've got snowy conditions. And that is going to play a part in the game as well. But there we go. Fill up with some gas. That should pretty much cover the whole journey, I think. I might need to fill up again towards the end. So with the snowy conditions, what's added to the game is little patches of ice that you'll slip on when you go over them. They crop up now and then. Oh, that's not a very good start. One thing to mention about the changing gear is you can't change gear while you've got your finger on the fire button or act effectively while you're accelerating uh, which is an interesting touch that's quite a, a faithful recreation of real driving oh dear I'm not doing very well here at the moment try and get up to a decent speed there we go that's good enough okay so it's now just weaving through the traffic and also trying to avoid the slippy patches so graphically, it's fairly simplistic, but it's a good, uh, you know, sort of driving game graphics, I guess. The cars are fairly unremarkable, but it's a good uh, sensation of speed that it creates with the movement of the dashes in the middle of the road and also the side of the road. Uh, it's quite smooth as well, so there's not really any complaints about the graphics. For a 1985 game, I think they're pretty decent. There could be a bit more variety in the cars. You've got cars, trucks and motorbikes, but they're not too bad. Uh, still doing all right for gas. I should make it to the next city without having to worry about refilling on gas. I think when you hit those little patches, you do slide from left to right, um, which and also slows you down. Also means you could crash into something like I just did there. Uh, there's not really any penalty for crashing other than it slows you down. Obviously, uh, increases the amount of time it takes you to get to your next destination. So I've only got about 100 miles to go. So yeah, I'm reaching the city limits again, but plenty of time left. On the right hand side it's got uh, a readout that says ET which is elapsed time and that's your overall time for the, the race from beginning to end. Should make it quite easy although I'm going to need gas at the start of the next stage but you usually get a gas station quite early on anyway. But yeah just 30 miles to go just weave through the traffic get a bit of speed up let's get over 200 just to finish this off. There we go, and I've made it to where I was going, Salt Lake, I think it was. I can't even remember where I was going. Denver, sorry, Salt Lake was the previous route. So again, you get back to the road map and you've got three options. Well, you could go up to Billings for some reason, that would be crazy. You could go to Minneapolis, you can go to St. Louis, or you could go down to Albuquerque, which again would be stupid. So for this route, I'm going to go up to Minneapolis, which is another long route. You've got 11 minutes or 11 time units, whatever they are, and 835 miles, sorry, 834 miles to do. So let's go for that. Also, one thing I haven't mentioned is it shows your average speed from the previous leg there, which is 128 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive speed for an 800 mile journey or whatever it was. So I'm currently in fifth place. So let's move on to the next step, the next stage. So you can see the snow's gone now and it's a nice green, Um, surroundings need some gas so let's quickly get the gas bit wary of missing it so oh I've missed it oh that's a problem this could be a problem now can I get another hundred miles under my belt without running out of fuel yeah the stopping for gas is kind of annoying it's a nice touch it's a nice idea okay so here I am with a police car again I'm gonna try and blast past it this time there we go I managed to blast past it because I was going over 200 miles an hour but now I'm really low on fuel and I don't know when the next gas station is coming up oh it's coming up now that's handy oh it's gone night time now as well so I just need to trundle along slowly make sure I don't miss this gas station there we go got there just in time before I run out of fuel. So now I've just got to motor on through the night to the my next destination, which is Minneapolis. That's going to take a few minutes to do. Hopefully I'll make it there. So I've been motoring on through the night for a couple of minutes. 
uh, doing about 180 miles an hour. It's been a pretty boring route this, there's not much traffic on the roads as you'd expect during the night time I suppose. So weaving around it's not been too challenging. Stopped for gas at one point and refilled as well. So I'm just reaching the city limits of Minneapolis. Plenty of time actually, I could have filled up with gas again there but I'll make it quite easily and fill up early on in the next port. So it's a pretty fun game, I like the idea, I like the challenge of driving across America. You can see Minneapolis on the horizon there now, nearly there. Um, it, it, you could say it's a bit monotonous just weaving through the traffic, but it also requires quite a lot of focus because when you're going at those speeds, one mistake and you get knocked down and you've got to get your speed up again. So the next part of the route is pretty quick, which is Chicago. So I think I'm just going to pause the video at this point get to Chicago and then we'll do the latter part of the journey on the video again because I don't think you really need to see the whole journey. So I actually changed my mind and I've decided to record a bit of this journey because you can see it's now dawning dawn, <laughs> the date is dawning. Um, so I thought it would be quite a nice thing to see. You can see gradually the, the sun is rising and uh, then it becomes daytime again. Uh, not much more to say about that, so probably uh, cut towards the end of this leg of the route. I'm not actually doing particularly well here, but I've got plenty of time and it's a very short route. I'm pretty sure any time you have left from the previous stage gets added onto your time for the next stage. So that does mean the quicker you complete one stage, the, the more time you have to do the next one. And that means a little bit more chance to, for if you make a mistake to, to not lose out on time. So I've got plenty of gas here, so I don't really need to fill up again just max up the speed a little bit more and uh, try and get to Chicago as quickly as possible. Oh, <laughs> by not, which would be helpful if I didn't crash into stuff. So I've got the radar warning again, just cruising into, oh dear, I've got pulled over, I'm going too fast. It must be 60 the limit, I think, because at 60 you can pass him, but, um, you don't get caught and any faster than that you do seem to get caught so I'm right at the city limits as I was saying of Chicago you can see Chicago on the horizon uh, got loads of time so getting stopped by the police doesn't cost you anything other than maybe 10 or 15 seconds of time so it's only really a problem if you've got very little time left it's actually arguably better to get stopped by the cops and take that penalty rather than just driving slowly for a little bit of course if you try and blast past them quickly that's another story okay so i'm currently in 11th place so not doing particularly well at the moment uh, i've got a very short leg here from chicago to detroit uh, so i'll do that and then we'll move on to the latter part which is from detroit to new york i think and then finally new york to washington okay so i'm just approaching uh, new york now i've got low fuel I should make it, but I'm going to need gas right from the start of the next thing. Oh, I've had a really terrible run here. I've hit loads of cars. You can see quite clearly New York on the skyline there. Nearly there. But yeah, I'm really going to need fuel right at the start of the final leg. And uh, my time is absolutely diabolical. I must be way off the pace. I'm currently in 10th place. Amazingly, I've made a place up and I've got no idea how because that was an awful run. So the final stage of the journey is to, strangely, you can go to Portland, which would be really strange because the aim of the game is to get to Washington. So here we go. This is the final leg and I'm really going to need fuel immediately here. So I've got to be very careful. It's only a short leg and I've got plenty of time. But quite desperately need fuel and I've run out of gas that's a disaster now there is gas station on the right and what you can do is tap the buttons to pump to just to try and move the car along you're effectively pushing the car along it yourself here so I'm losing tons of time there's loads of cars going past me but you can actually tap the buttons almost like a, a an Olympics type game like a hyper sports type game to try and move the car as quickly as you can uh, so yeah, this is a real disaster, although it does show uh, that aspect of the game. So it's going to fill up. I've then just got to try and get as fast as I can to get to Washington. Well, that's been a pretty much a disaster. I missed the gas station 
on the previous leg that I needed to get to just before I got to New York. Uh, so that's really messed things up for me. So all I can do now is try and get to Washington as quickly as I can, which won't take long. So I should complete the game, so that's at least one good thing. But um, yeah, it's been a little bit of a shambles. I don't think I'm going to be finishing very highly placed in the high score table, unfortunately. Nearly there. As you can see, there's a lot more traffic when you reach the city areas compared to the more rural sort of countryside areas. Nearly there. Oh, oh. took my eye just to see how many miles I've got left to go. Took my eye off the ball, so to speak, or off the road and uh, crashed and that shows you why you shouldn't take your eye off the road I suppose. So there we go finally you can see Washington the Capitol building there or the White House possibly in the background and there we go unfortunately I didn't make the high score table because of those terrible runs towards the end but if I had I'd been able to put my name in there on the high score table uh, yeah I probably missed it by I guess I, I'm, I've got a time there of 31 27 um, so yeah I missed out on the high score table unfortunately which is a bit of a shame because it would have been nice to put my name in there you also get to put in the date and also save it if you get your name in the high score table you can save it to tape if you wanted to which are all nice features but unfortunately I've been a bit of a mess of it it was really the leg going to New York where I really screwed up I think I probably hit another car about four or five times which really set me back bit of a shame there but there you go so clearly I'm not going to take you through the other routes but there are the two other routes to drive and also the one where you go through every city which would take a serious amount of time to do. So let's move on to the review scores. So firstly the packaging I thought was poor and I'm setting aside the fact that I haven't got the instructions. I don't really know why the instructions would need to be in a booklet because they're not that complicated. The controls are fairly straightforward. I've worked them out myself fairly easily and the, the, it's fairly self-explanatory what you're supposed to do in the game as well. So I'm actually just going to give the packaging four because I thought the cover was poor and the instructions, although they were missing, I don't think they needed to be in a booklet anyway. Um, so yeah, four out of ten for the packaging. Presentation I think is really good. You've got the high score table, you've got a nice title screen, albeit you only see it the once when the game starts. You've got all the options of which route to choose and different routes to choose from beginning to end as well. So excellent for the presentation. So I'm going to give that 8. Graphics are fairly run-of-the-mill, I would say. Above average, but not much above average. Pretty good for the time, but in retrospect, fairly basic. So I'm going to give them a score of 6 out of 10. Sound is also pretty basic, just engine noises and a little tune when you reach each city. Uh, so I'm going to go with 5 out of 10 for the sound. And playability, I think, was really good. It's, I guess you could say it's a little bit dull on the longer routes, the longer stages. Um, just weaving through the traffic but the fact you've got things like having to fill up with gas uh, having to avoid police radars and things like that are nice little touches and the actual driving aspects are nicely playable as well in terms of a good sensation of speed and um, the controls in terms of holding the fire button to accelerate and using up and down to change gear so all in all I think it's a nicely playable game lots of longevity as well high score challenge and also the fact that you can choose a different route each time you play makes it really good so I'm going to give it a playability score of 8 out of 10 and that gives it an overall total score of 7.4 and definitely worth the 199 asking price I think it was probably a good full price game back in 1985 but in 1988 for 2 quid I think it's one of the best games we've seen so far so there you go that's my review of the great American cross country road race or American road race as it's called in this re-release definitely a decent game let me know your thoughts about it in the comments if you've got any and that'll do for this game review okay so that's the last of the games that my wife chose for me to play and overall I think she did pretty well there's two good games one average game and two poor games that's pretty much the best you can expect from five games from this range I think so next up we're going to choose another method for choosing games and I'm actually going to get my dog to choose the next five games now my dog Brody We've had him about eight weeks now. We got him, he's a rescue dog from Romania. He's a street dog. He's six years old. You're going to see him on screen in a minute. He looks like he's a very small husky, but actually we had a DNA test done on him and there seems to be no husky in him at all. In fact, the most prominent species in him is bizarrely an English Cocker Spaniel. So there you go. I don't know if that tells you about DNA tests or just about dog 
um, genetics really, I'm not sure what that tells you, but there you go. So basically we're going to go to Brody, he's going to choose one of two games each time with a particular theme for the next five games and then we'll come up with another method after that. So let's head over and choose the first game with Brody. So say hello to Brody. Now Brody is very excited about food, he loves food. So at the moment I've got this gate here to stop him getting in while I set this up. So I've got two games and the two game choices this time are related to exercise I guess you would say. So we've got Cheap Skate, I'm going to stand that up there and we've got Twinkie Goes Hiking, I'm going to stand that up there. In fact I'm going to put them this way around, I think they'll be better over here. So we've got these two games and I'm going to put one treat in front of each of them. And the idea is whichever one he knocks over first will be eliminated and the other one will be the game that I play. Um, each time for these choices it's going to be either a silver bird game or a silver range game. So there you go, we've got the two games set up. Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to open the gate and hopefully he will come in and knock one of these over and the other one will be the winner. So here we go, let's see what he does. And actually he's completely ignored them both. <laughs> that didn't go particularly well did it? Oh here we go, he's come back, he's having another look, there we go. Twinkie Goes Hiking is gone and Cheapskate is therefore the first game that I'm going to play that Brody's chosen. So there you go, that's what we'll be playing next time around. Tune in for another episode of the Silverbird Selection and see me playing Cheapskate in the future. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.